back again, Fortune Friends. We are on the fifth deck of this Mass Mutations box. Let's open up another one and see what we'll have for today. All right, today we have Shadows, Saurians, and Logos. We have Soria of Ooze Peak with a, a demonic looking archon that has two little daggers in its hand, but he's holding the dagger part for some reason. <laughs> And I like his, it looks like there's like two eyes here that are kind of offset, so he looks kind of wonky. <laughs> like that a lot. Okay, putting down the Archon card and squaring up, we are starting with Shadows. All right, we have Xeno Thief, a three power creature that has Elusive and Fight. Look at the top three cards of your deck, put one, on, put one into your hand and one on the bottom of your deck. Some efficiency there. We've got Master Plan, a rare artifact with an Amber Pip. Play, put a card from your hand face down under Master Plan. Omni, play the card under Master Plan. Destroy Master Plan. Really versatile card. Bone Rot Venom, an upgrade with an Amber Pip. After this creature is used, deal two damage to it. Good to shut down some smaller creatures. Tempting Offer, a, an action card with an Amber Pip. Play, return an enemy creature to its owner's hand. If you do, your opponent gains one Amber. We've got Shoulder Id, enhanced with a damage pip, which has got Taunt, 6 power, Taunt, it cannot fight, and when it would deal damage, steal one instead. Great card to protect some smaller creatures. Rad Penny is a creature with 1 power and an enhanced capture pip, which is really cool. And when you play her, you steal one, and when she's destroyed, you shuffle her back into your deck. So yeah, she's really cool. Good Rad Penny. That's a Rad Penny. <laughs> We got uh, Opportunist, an upgrade with an Amber Pip. This creature gains Elusive, and play, this creature captures one from its opponent. Got some capture so far. Nexus, a three power creature with Elusive, and Reap, use an enemy artifact as if it were yours. Could potentially be some Amber or artifact control. Oh, we got two of those, nice. We have Francis the Economist, a uh, skirmish, uh, three power creature with Skirmish, and fight, each player gains one Amber. Bone Nithing, a two power creature with play, steal one amber for each forge key your opponent has. Good mid to late gates, game swing. We have Dark Amber Vault. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a uh, kind of a uh, included card with another rare uh, artifact. After you play a mutant creature, draw a card. Each friendly mutant creature gets plus two power. So we're definitely have to do a uh, mutant count <laughs> at the end of this deck. That's really cool. That's a cool one to have. Neat. Moving on to Saurians, we have the Technosaurus, a 5 power creature. With play, you may exalt him. If you do, deal 3 damage to a creature. Reap, discard a card from your hand. If you do, draw a card. Does some damage, is a good amount of power, and he uh, increases your efficiency, so he does a lot. Hedonistic Intent is an action card with an Amber Pip, and you exalt each flank creature. We have Dreadbone Decimus, a 5 power creature with play fight. You may exalt Dreadbone Decimus. If you do, d destroy a creature with lower power than Dreadbone Decimus. Spoils of Battle is an action card with an Amber Pip. A friendly creature captures one Amber. Each creature with Amber on it captures one Amber from its opponent. Great Amber Swing card. Sagittarius Gaze, an action card with an Amber Pip. Play Exalt a Damaged Creature. Faust the Great is a great 4-power creature. Your opponent's keys cost plus 1 amber for each friendly creature with amber on it. And when you play him, you may exalt a friendly creature. Good amber control card. Defense Initiative is an action card enhanced with a damage pip. Play Ward a creature. You may exalt that creature. If you exalt it, ward each of its neighbors. We have Deimosaurus, a 4-power creature with play. You may exalt Deimosaurus if you do deal 3 damage to a creature. And when he's destroyed, you steal 1 amber. I like a lot of these multifaceted, multi-use cards because it deals damage and it steals. It's really, really good. Chant of Hubris is an action card with an Amber Pip. Play, move one Amber from a creature to another creature. Beware the Ides, an action card with an Amber Pip. Play, deal 23 damage to a cre creature in the center of its controller's battle line. Great so for taking care of those uh, opposing uh, leaders. And we have two of them, which is really cool. Lots of uh, nice removal. 
Axiom of Grisk is an action card. Play Water Creature, destroy each creature with no amber on it. Gain two chains. Always good to have at least one board wipe. On to Logos, we have the Upgrade Academy Training. If you control this creature, it belongs to House Logos instead of its original house, and this creature gains Reap, draw a card. Add it to something with really good Reap effects, we could get a lot of good use out of that. We have Professor Tarato, a four-power creature with each mutant creature gains Reap, draw a card. That's really good with that Dark Amber Vault. That'd be a really, really cool combo there. Hopefully there's a lot of mutants in this deck. Kurzap is an action card with play, destroy each non-mutant creature, gain one chain. We just keep wanting a lot of mutants in this deck. That's the theme of this deck, it seems like. Dimension Door, action card. For the remainder of the turn, any amber you would get from reaping is stolen from your opponent instead. Hopefully we have a lot of uh, Logos creatures. Standardized Testing, an action card with play, destroy each creature with the lowest power and each creature with the highest power. Another pseudo board wipe. Opposition Research, an action card with play. Enemy creatures cannot reap during your opponent's next turn. Munchling, a three-power creature with Skirmish. And Fight, you may discard a Logos card from your hand or Archives. If you do, gain one Amber. Lethal Logica, a action card with an Amber Pip. Discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard a Logos card or run out of cards. If you discard a Logos card this way, put it into your hand. Effervescent Principle, an action card with play. Each player loses half their amber, rounding on the down the loss. Gain one chain. Good amber control. Diametric Charge, an action card with an amber pip. Play, deal one damage to a creature with two damage splash. A little bit of damage spreading. Bot Bookton is a four-power creature with reap. Play the top card of your deck. And last card is Auto Encoder. It is an artifact with after a card is discarded from your hand, archive the top card of your deck. Really interesting deck. I, I'm really interested to see how many mutants we have and how much synergy we have w w between the mutants in this deck. So I'll go ahead and get the counts going, and I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I have separated out the cards. Let's get our counts. Let's do our creatures. We've got four creatures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen creatures. So a little bit below below average, I'd say that's a low count for creatures. And then we'll add these two to our amber pile. You say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen amber. So about an average number of amber and a little below average amount of creatures. Okay, let's look at amber control. Looking at creatures for amber control, we have one, two, three, four, Five, six, for sure. <laughs> this can steal, so I'll say six and a half. We only have three Logos creatures, so it's not going to be easy to use this. So I'll just say uh, six and a half. Seven and a half. Seven and a half, pretty good. Pretty good amount of amber control. All right, we're looking for artifact control. I do believe the only artifact we control we have are these nexuses, which I've said, as I've said previously, they don't inherently destroy an artifact, but if an artifact destroys itself to use it, then those are very good. Uh, looking for creature control, things that damage or destroy creatures. Set that back up there. Uh, we've got this damage pip. So one, two, three, four, um, this is a bit slow, so four, so four. Five, six, seven. Eight, 
nine, ten. Wow. Eleven. Eleven cards that damage or destroy creatures. And we have a good amount of board control in this deck, which is really nice. Uh, now, our, our efficiency is going to be really interesting with this deck because we have a few things going for us. Uh, first of all, we have this uh, Professor Tarato. I don't think we have any draw pips anywhere and nothing else that let us draw, first of all. Um... Actually, this, this lets us reap to, to draw, so I'll count that as, since it's a reap, mm, discards and draws, I'll count that as half. Half efficiency for that. Nothing else does a similar effect, I think. And because Red Penny goes back into our deck, we could, but she's always a good steal. So maybe we'll cancel, we'll cancel her out with that other guy. So we'll say zero for both of them. Uh, this one's pretty good for fighting. Uh, we'll get a... Uh, card in our hand. Um, so we'll count that as, since it's fighting it slow, we'll count that as half. So positive one half so far. <laughs> My method's a little bit weird, I know. But then this guy, okay, so each mutant creature gains reap draw a card. That is worth a total of, I think, we have seven, we have seven mutant, mutant creatures in our deck. Uh, half of our creatures are mutants, which is really good. Um, so we'll say half rounded down. We, we're likely to have about half our creatures out in the time it would take for us to find him in our deck and play him, right? So just just looking at averages. So I'll say maybe three. I'll be conservative there. So three and a half for this guy. Three and a half positive draws for that guy. And then because we have seven mutant creatures, we'll count another three there. So that's uh, six and a half. Six and a half uh, positive, positive draws. Uh, including the Dark Amber Vault. And that's not that's not assuming that we get, you know, that, that Red Penny comes out multiple times, we can play her multiple times. Uh, that would add up to it. But uh, just on average, maybe we could accept, expect uh, six or seven draws um, out of our out of our uh, efficient cards here. Uh, we do have this that gives us minus two chains. So we'll say f uh, four and a half. Or sorry, we said six and a half before, right? So uh, yeah, four and a half, that's right. And then we have the principal, which is one. So three and a half still. Three and a half efficiency, given how much efficiency we get out of the Dark Amber Vault. And it also uh, boosts the power of our creatures. That's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, I like to see a lot of efficiency. Um, looking at Recursion, I don't know if this deck has really... I mean, she goes back into the deck. I don't know if that would call that Recursion in particular. It's not Recursion that we can pick or get things back with. So... Um, Oh, she also reaps it and the top card of our deck. So maybe we'll call the efficiency uh, four. Just four on the dot. But looking for recursion. I'm uh, not really seeing anything that can recur here. I don't think so. No. Okay. So no recursion. Disruption, things that get cards out of our opponent's hands or uh, prevent them from playing the game that they want to play. Um, I don't think we have much, if any, disruption. We have a lot of anger control and creature control, which is interesting, but we don't have very much disruption. Uh, that's creature control. Yeah. Uh, it's good protection, not disruption. Oh, okay, so maybe this, I mean, this is potentially Amber loss, right? It's not necessarily disruption, but I'll count it for half disruption because it prevents your opponent from reaping on a turn. So we'll say half for disruption. Now, looking at this, the only, uh, the other thing that I wanted to check was we have this master plan, right? Now, what would be the good cards to play under master plan? Um, what cards would we want to play off house? Probably... Maybe a big, maybe a big amber swing card. But we get, we do a big amber swing on any turn. Um, that would be one thing. Maybe a defense initiative to award creatures on any turn. Probably not likely. Maybe Axiom Grisk. That's probably a more likely one. Be able to destroy a bunch of creatures on any turn. That's really, really good. Dimension Door might be good because we have, you know, three mutant creatures in. Uh, logos, but we have we have uh, four in the other two houses, 
four more in the other two houses, so we have seven total. If we can play more mutant creatures on, an, on a different turn, and then we could master plan an invention door, might be able to seal a bunch more than on just the logo's turn. So that's a possibility. Standardized testing is another board wipe. That might be good. Effervescent in principle might also be good. So we have a fair few good targets for that master plan, and we have a decent amount of amber control and, uh, you know, lo below average creatures. And I think that efficiency is really good in this deck. I think the efficiency is going to be the biggest draw to it. Uh, I'm going to say this deck's in the high 60s. Yeah, I want to say maybe maybe not super high, actually. Maybe just above average. I mean, I'll, I'll call this deck a 66. You know, I'd rather go below than above. But I think, I think because it has a low amount of creatures... And it doesn't um, it doesn't have a huge amber swing in particular, right? It has a lot of one-offs, a few creatures, um, cards that, you know, Bone Nifting's probably the best steel card it has. You can steal up to two by itself. But everything else is just like producing one amber by reaping or producing one amber by playing a card. Uh, not super uh, swingy for your own amber. So I'm going to say this is a 66. Uh, all right, go ahead and make your guesses, and we'll head to my desktop. All right, welcome back to my desktop. I have copied the link. Uh, like I said, I think this deck will be a 66. It had a lot of really good utility in terms of amber control and creature control, but it didn't have any really standout cards for uh, building up our own amber. It had a lot of uh, it had an average amount of pips on on the amber pips on the cards, and a, below uh, pretty close to low, very very low, I'd say average amount of uh, creatures in the deck overall. And I don't think the efficiency will kind of get it above a 70 um, in terms of, you know, just get, getting getting amber, you know, is fundamentally the name of the game. And I don't know. I mean, it, it's possible, actually, that the efficiency could uh, boost up the deck since it has an average amount of amber. It could possibly make it seem like more since we'll be probably cycling, cycling through the deck a bit more. Um, but then we do have the two cards that give us chains. Uh, we not not like we'll use it every single game. Use both of those cards every single game, but uh, they are a contributing factor when the SAS score is calculated. So um, anyway, I'm gonna go with my 66. I'll be happy if it's in the 70s. But uh, go ahead and make your guesses, and let's see what we got. 68. Okay, I wasn't too far off. Uh, let's see if I was right about the amber being the issue. So right now we have um, a lot going against us when it comes to amber control. Um, I mean, it's a lot of small amounts, right? The Hedonistic Intent, Defense Initiative, France the Economist, Technosaurus, and uh, Tempting Offer, and Dreadbone Decimus. They, most of these all are, uh, are exalt, exalt our creatures. So that gives our opponent more potential amber, right? So the, the exalting uh, did take away. Um, but we still have more synergy than anti-synergy in this deck. We have 13 an uh, synergy and only 3 anti-synergy. So, <clears throat> I guess those uh, minuses weren't too bad. The positive amber is everything except for the effervescent principle, which of course takes away half of our own. Um, artifact control, again, is just the nexuses. Uh, for speed, we have 10 speed. Uh, we have that. Lithological as well will pr improve our speed. Uh, I don't always end up playing that card, but, you know, it's probably a good one in case we do want to play a Logos turn for some reason and we have only, like, one or two cards. Or maybe even, like, on a full Logos turn, if we had six cards in our hand, we could play Lethal Logica and, and have, like, maybe another card to play that's that could be huge. Or if we're trying to fish for that uh, Effervescent Principle, that might be a, another reason to play that. Yeah, so could be useful. The Axe McGrisk, the uh, Rad Penny is taking away half. Kurzap is taking away half. Uh, Kurzap was the one that uh, gave us one chain. That's right. Destroying all mutant creatures gave us one chain. Effervescent Principle. So we had a lot that's taking away our efficiency, but we still had 10 efficiency here because of the Dark Amber Vault, the Professor Tirato, Lethal Logica, Auto Encoder, Master Plan, taking another card out of our hand. So there's, there's a lot there that's giving us efficiency. Uh, so it was a little bit higher than I thought. I thought it was a 66, but yeah, so the efficiency was a bit better than I thought. Tempting Offer, offering disruption for us. Um, that was the one that uh, returned an enemy creature to its owner's hand. So that they count returning to the owner's hand as disruption. I guess it's not really a creature control, because it just it just disrupts them for at least one turn. Um, but 
I mean, it's it's one card. It's only one disruption card. So interesting. Okay, so uh, looking looking at this expected amber, I've seen more more in decks that that have better SASs. I want to think that this is kind of holding it back a bit, right? Because you can see the numbers here. A lot of them are right around one. Um, a, a lot of them are um, below one. Uh, some one is negative, but uh, we only have we have very few that are getting close to that two mark. Nothing really stand out as far as building up amber in this deck. Going to the synergies and anti synergies, uh, Deimosaurus has some good synergy with things that destroy friendly creatures uh, because it wants to just be destroyed and um, that way it can steal one. So we have the standardized testing and Axiom Grisk to help us do that. The Dark Amber Vault has positive synergy with mutant creatures, and we have seven in this deck. Um, looking at the Torato, we have mutant creatures, so that's good. Um, anything else that stands out here? Uh, we have a lot of things that exalt, so Axiom of Grisk is pretty good. Mm, for Master Plan, I, I was thinking again what we could use for Master Plan, and I think I'm going to stick with what I said before. Probably either a board wipe, um... Board wipe or one of the really good uh, Saurian cards like Beware the Ides, um, maybe even Dreadbone Decimus. Uh, I'd probably rather do a board wipe. Effervescent Principle might be a good one to put underneath there. Any turn can cut our amber in half. So there's a, there's a few good options there. Kurzap has negative seventy percent uh, efficiency because we have half of our creatures not mutant. So we will more than likely, on average, we'll destroy some creatures of our own when we play Kurzap in this deck. I mean, consider. Uh, standardized testing, we have a lot of creatures with low power and a lot of creatures with high power. <laughs> Nothing super in the middle, but we're only losing a, a total of 35% for that. So uh, it seems to be okay, uh, not great. Uh, looking on further... Nothing else is really adding or subtracting I've seen so far that that much really. Um, we have the Rad Penny having its own efficiency or its own uh, synergy because it's a uh, self-enhanced, so it'll keep coming back to capture stuff, which is really nice. Um, and spoils the battle exalts the enemy. Uh, so it spoils the battle. Uh, has negative 45% because we have things that exalt enemy like Sagittarius Gaze, Deimosaurus, Hedonistic Intent, and Technosaurus. Um, so that would that would make uh, yeah, that would make some opponent's creatures capture Amber from us. So we, we just need to be aware of how many creatures have Amber on them before we play that. But overall, I think we got pretty close here, and I, I think uh, we were pretty correct with there being no standout Amber generation in this deck. It needs It needs something that really kind of is either repeatable or um, can be done multiple times throughout the deck to really make it stand out. But it's not a bad deck. I actually think I want to try this one out and see how it runs. But uh, what did you guys guess? Did you get close? Uh, you know, if you want to leave a comment down below with, with what you guessed, feel free. And uh, if you like this video, I appreciate a like. And if you want to see more of this content, please subscribe. You all have a good day. Bye-bye.